a brief introduction to a basic examination of the brachial plexus. We'll use Louis's left side as the examination. So the key thing is examining, looking first of all for muscle wasting, muscle contour, but also for the horners. So looking at the eyes, looking for an uh, eyelid lag uh, and a pupil that's small, myotic. Often in a brightly lit room, you've got to shade the eyes. The other side will dilate out. This side can't because it's lost its sympathetics. We then look for any scars, looking around. And then we move to sensation. Now, as a brief screening tool, we can use a root level examination. And that's simply put that C5 is just here. So we say, that feels normal. Does this feel normal? And then we do C6 on the forearm, C7, middle finger, C8, little finger, T1, inside of the arm. We then move to movement examination. There's an argument to go anatomically down through the plexus or to do it in an easier way for you to learn and remember. So I think if we do this as a dance, we can easily remember the steps. It doesn't necessarily fit with the order that these things come off the plexus, but it's an easy way to remember the examination. The first thing to start with is a non-brachial plexus muscle, and that's trapezius. And that's the contour just here. So we can see that that's equal and the same. Again, with all of these examinations, we take our hand and we feel the muscle belly. Now, if I ask Louis just to shrug his shoulders up, we can see and feel that contract. Just relax. This is the spinal accessory nerve, spinal nerve 11. It comes down, takes sternocleidomastoid, which if we want to examine, we can ask Louis just to push his chin against my hand here and the other side just here, and we can see that muscle coming up. And it then comes to trapezius. Now it's very useful as an examination because it stabilizes and controls the scapula, retracts it, but it's also a good donor. We use this nerve occasionally to re-innovate as a nerve transfer. So that's a useful first step, appreciating it's not part of the brachial plexus. We then move across to the dorsal scapular nerve, and we'll do that from the back, but I'm going to run through the pictures here and we'll cut in some pictures from behind. So I'm going to just to bring his shoulder blades back together as if he's on parade, and we can see the muscles at the back there. Relax down. We've got a very clear view of trapezius here. It's a wonderful triangular muscle, comes down to here and then runs down the back. And if we just ask Louis to bring his arms here, just bring both of your arms to the back and push away, what we'll clearly see is that lovely trapezial function. If we ask Louis to pull his hands towards his back, we can see the dorsal scapula territory. So we can see levator, rhomboids minor, rhomboid major. So just once again, pushing away the trap and pulling in towards the dorsal scap. We ask Louis to bring the shoulder blades together. We'll see the activity of the dorsal scapular territory, the rhomboids bringing those shoulder blades together. And if we then ask him to shrug the shoulders up, we'll really clearly see both the levator and the trap functioning. And relax. One muscle as well that we've uh, not examined so far is that of serratus anterior. And we're seeing the interdigitations from the front here, that's a zigzag down the front, brings a muscle and a tendon here to attach onto the pole of the scapula. We don't need a wall to examine that, we just cradle the arm in this manner. And that's Louis to try and push me through the wall, which I'm sure we can do. And we can see that tendon just here as Louis stabilizing that scapula. So this muscle comes up and around. We don't need a wall to examine that. Cradle the arm and ask Louis to gently push me forwards. And we'll see that muscle firing and stabilizing that scapula. Serratus anterior. We can see Louis's interdigitations here of serratus anterior. It's the long thoracic nerve comes out from uh, the upper trunk, runs down behind scalenus medius, down on the chest wall and down to here. And if we ask Louis just to fire the arm forwards, we can see those firing up and this muscle belly that comes around and stabilizes the scapula, serratus anterior, long thoracic nerve. We're then gonna look at the composite movement of shoulder abduction. Now this uses a number of muscles. We're gonna bring the arm here and we're gonna ask Louis to either keep it still or to resist against us. We're going to first feel deltoid. Deltoid's got three parts, but here we're very clearly bringing out the lateral part of deltoid. We can feel in this position supraspinatus, so that's just here. 
We can then ask Louis to push out against us and we can feel infraspinatus. We just ask Louis to keep his elbow in and just open up the door of the arm just in this movement. We can really isolate infraspinatus and teres minor just behind that. And that's a branch of the axillary nerve along with the deltoid. We then come and it's then adduction of the shoulder. So if we ask Louis to bring his shoulder down to try and squeeze as if we're squeezing the bagpipes, so squeeze your arm down towards your side, you never squeeze the bagpipes. And we've got pectoralis major here. We've got the top part and the bottom part. So clavicular and sternal heads. This is the top of the plexus and the lower part of the plexus. So five, six, seven, eight, maybe even a bit of T1. And from the back, we'll bring it around in a minute, but we've got latissimus dorsi, which is very clear here, the posterior border of the axilla. Now from the side, we can clearly see trapezius here. And as we bring the shoulder blades back, we can see the retraction, protraction of that scapula. As we come now to have a look at deltoid, we can see not only if you just take the arm away from your side, the very clear lateral deltoid mass, we can also notice from this position that if we bring the arm back into retroposition in abduction, we see the posterior fibres of deltoid firing. If deltoid isn't working, you cannot recreate this position. This is the only movement that deltoid does on its own. Without deltoid, the arm will jump forwards into the plane of the scapula with supraspinatus being the the major vector. So as we bring Aslowy to push the elbow backwards, we'll clearly see that posterior part of deltoid and one, two, three parts. If we ask Louis to bring the arm forward, we'll see the anterior deltoid fire as well. Three parts of deltoid, anterior for forward flexion, lateral for abduction, and the posterior fibres here do the retroposition uh, of the shoulder, particularly in abduction. As we bring the arm up and ask Louis to elbow backwards, you can clearly see the posterior fibres of deltoid there. And look at the adduction, we can see trap. It's this big muscle here. Trapezius is a lovely muscle and is the posterior wall of the axilla, but as I ask Louis to bring his arm down towards his side, you'll see that firing nicely just there. You can see teres major as well, and they form a conjoint tendon just there. We then move on to elbow flexion. As the arm bends up, we'll clearly see biceps. Can you bend your arm up? We'll see biceps. We also have brachialis that just sits behind here. So those are the two major muscles. But if we bring the arm into neutral rotation and we ask Louis to bend up, we'll also see brachioradialis. So these are muscular cutaneous nerve first for biceps, um, radial nerve and muscular cutaneous nerve for brachialis, and then radial nerve for brachioradialis. As we Look for elbow flexion. If you just bend the arm up, we can clearly see here the biceps and the brachialis. And as we go into mid prone and ask Louis again to flex his elbow, we'll see brachioradialis come up. We look at triceps and we can see if you just straighten the arm, we can clearly see the triceps of the radial function here. Triceps, straighten the arm out again. Anyway, you can see the three heads, the lateral, the long coming all the way up here, and the medial head of triceps. We then look at the forearm. So we do resisted pronation. So I'm going to ask Louis to bring the arm round. Again, we're feeling with the fingers. We're trying to turn the palm to the floor. And we can see pronator teres. Just relax. And again, I ask you just to turn the hand over. You can see pronator teres come out here. And then we're going to do exactly the opposite. We put the fingers on this side for the um, supinator muscle belly. We're going to ask Louis to bring the wrist round and feel the supinator. We're then going to go to wrist extension. We're looking if that's centralised or radially deviated. And then bring the wrist round and ask Louis to pull the wrist up as strong as he can. And again, we can see the median and ulnar innervated wrist flexors. Hand movements now, nice and easy. We look for the extrinsics. So we look for grip. So ask Louis just to make a grip of his hand. And then we bring the hand over and we look for, X, for the intrinsic function of abduction and adduction. If we're going to move on and test our special sign, the Tinel sign, we're aware that the brachial plexus sits in here, the posterior triangle of the neck. So we have the anterior border of the uh, sternocleidomastoid. So the anterior border is the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. The inferior border is the superior border of the clavicle, the collarbone. And the posterior dorsal border is the ventral border of trapezius. So we have a triangle as described just here. Within there runs the brachial plexus. It runs diagonally from the neck and down to run behind the collarbone to then continue in the infraclavicular region. 
We can feel just at the bottom here the subclavian artery pulsations. The brachial plexus is easily rollable over your fingers. And we tap just here for the upper trunk, and then the middle trunk, and then the lower trunk. And then we continue on the course of the brachial plexus, down the arm, and it goes underneath this pectoralis major tendon and comes out here down the brachium. With the tenel sign and game for all of the nerves, we should start distally and work proximally. If we're looking for a plexus injury, we've got a specific question. Is there a, a degenerative injury here? But for the median nerve, we'd start here on the digital branches, come to the carpal tunnel, follow the course of the median nerve to the medial aspect of the antecubital fossa, and then follow the brachial bundle up. You can feel that bundle if you just come in here behind those elbow flexors, you'll just find the median nerve. That runs all the way up and again goes all the way up to C5, 6, 7, 8 and 1. For the ulnar nerve, the same thing. Just here, starting on the ulnar border, through Guillaume's canal, it's around the corner more than you'd expect because it's coming down to behind the medial epicondyle and then again it runs up and again you can palpate and feel that. You can often feel the intramuscular septum here as well as it comes up. For the radial nerve, first dorsal web space up along the nerve. The nerve then comes around this groove, so we come in here and up, spiralling up, up between triceps and into here. We just turn you around, Louis. For the axillary nerve, the nerve comes around the front underneath the uh, glenohumeral joint and comes out in the quadrilateral space, which is just here. So just inferior to the uh, teres minor and just between the lateral and long heads. Uh, a tricep. So you can feel that quadrilateral space and percussion there will tell you whether that axillary nerve has an injury at this level. The brachial plexus, sensory and tenel examination.